Act Investor here bringing you another independent analysis. This time we're taking a look at ticker symbol ATVI. That's Activision Blizzard. This is a request from Peast01. So thanks for the request, Peast01. I love some good old ATVI. So with that said, let's get right to the technicals. This is a one day chart. Each candlestick on the chart is going to represent one day of trading. And though we're focused on the current downtrend from Brexit and the overall tank that the markets are currently going through, but they're overall tanking. Uh, this gives us a really good picture. This overall trend gives us a really good picture. So this is actually, that big blue line is actually the uptrend from January 2015. And if you guys remember, 2015 was like ATVI's best year. That's when they really, really, really started to kill it. ATVI really had a great year in 2015. So these dotted lines right here and here, that's showing us 2015. And then this and this is showing us 2016, and then over here is 2017, but we're not even obviously gonna be needing that. So that's where I put our pivot points, since plenty of room over there to, to make that nice and neat. But what's really interesting is you can see this trend line from 2015 really played effect. We bounced off it here about halfway through the month, a little over halfway through the year rather, not the month, and a ton of volume there. I kinda, I don't remember what happened, but something must have happened there. Ton of volume and a pretty significant uh, drop there, but it bounced right back up. And then once again, over here, this was when we had the January slash February lows. More specifically though, it was January, the latter part of January. Um, that was actually, oh no, that was actually February. Yeah, February 11th is when we had this drop right here. So that was the February lows of this year, 2016. Bounced right off that trend line once again, and we are working our way up. So. Overall, Activision Blizzard is still in an uptrend. This is the overall greater picture though, and obviously, you know, we don't want to see ATVI come down to 3192, but as long as it does stay above this line, we're going to be in an overall uptrend. But uh, like, obviously, we don't want to see it drop down that low, and I don't think it's going to drop down that low at all. So we're actually on some pretty good support right now. So with that trend line out of the way, the picture of this overall trend out of the way, let's take a look at these pivot points here on the right hand side of the chart we have. 3896, 3722, 3625, 3487, 3192, and $28 flat. So our current share price is trading right around $36.98. And unfortunately, we did actually close right below 3722. Rather, 3722 right there. It's this pivot point here. Just closed right under that. But you can see we're kind of actually bouncing right off that 50 period moving average. We did close a little bit below it but it's about halfway into the candle. So we could still bounce off that. Now 36.25, that's gonna be this, um, what's the proper term for that? Segmented line, I don't think that's the proper term, but you guys know what I mean. Segmented line here, that's gonna be soft support actually. So hard support is down at 34.87, but I could see it bouncing off 36.25 if it does continue to dip. And we are down, let's see, we're down 4.98% today. Well, you know, on Friday from the the overall tanking that the markets have been doing from the Brexit. So we traded, let's see, we were at about 38.93 and we fell off to about 36.98 and that was about a 5% decrease. So I'm gonna do a quick calculation here. Just give me one moment. Let's see what it would be if we hit that soft support from our current share price. So we're at 36.98. And if we bounce off that pivot point, that soft support at 36.25, we're looking at a decrease of 1.97%. So if you know if we don't start bouncing now, I think there's a really good chance we bounce off 36.25, and we're looking at another 1.97% drop, so almost a 2% drop, so much less than half of what we've already experienced. So I could see Blizzard turning around, but obviously. Being on the S&P 500, it's gonna be affected by the overall markets as well, but it's not looking really that bad. I mean, we, we were in this channel for a while right here, and we were almost breaking into the upside. It's really unfortunate that all the markets are dropping now because we were kind of looking like we were about to break out of that channel, push above 38.96 and working our way up to the $39 range. So it's unfortunate that it had to happen like this. We are now at the bottom of that channel and we did break it but we just need to get above 37.22 to get back into this channel. And we're at 36.98, basically 37, so we're not too far off. So I think either we start pushing up or we dip down to this soft support and start pushing up. Worst, worst, worst case scenario, we dropped 34.87. I don't think that's very likely though. And if that does happen, we're looking at another 5.7% decrease. 
So that is quite, quite significant. That is more of a drop than we've already experienced. And I don't think that's gonna happen really. We're gonna take, it's gonna need a lot of volume. Look at the volume that took just to get this candle here. A lot of volume. We haven't had volume like that in a few weeks. Remember these are one day candles. So yeah, I don't think that's too likely. And in the greater picture, as long as we're, you know, bouncing off this trend line, we're still in an overall uptrend. But I don't think it's very likely that we get down here, let alone all the way down here. So just keep that in mind. I think, you know, the chart's really not that bad. The 13 and 20 periods are converging. It's not like they are that far below or far above our candles. It's not like the 50 periods way above our candles. Like we saw over here, if you look at this area of the chart, we had the 50 period way above our candles, the 20 period and the 13 period all above our candles. Not really the case here. The 50 period's barely above it. The 20 and 13 periods are also barely above it and they're converged. So we can start turning around. Now, if we look at the RSI, it's really not gonna tell us much that we don't already know. We are oversold on the fast average. I can't even really see the red average on here because you know we're looking at so much data, the RSI is gonna be kind of ugly. I'll be honest with you guys. Pretty ugly looking RSI here. Not in terms of being bearish or bullish, but it's just literally difficult to look at. So we're not gonna get too much info from there. But looking at this real closely, I don't see the red slow average oversold, just that green average. So yeah, it's really not too bad. So let's see what happens next week. If the market continues to tank as significantly as it did today, then we might be testing the soft support and even this pivot point down here. But if the markets don't tank as much as they have been, I think there's a good chance we bounce off this soft support. And you know, if some miracle happens and the markets start recovering already, then we could just start pushing up right away. So we just kind of want to break back into this channel between 37.22 and 38.96. And just to reiterate, it is unfortunate that this happened because we were just about to break this channel to the upside. But let's see what happens next week. I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.